Here are your Court News Ohio top stories in five minutes. Clients of dishonest attorneys will receive a total of $124,000 in reimbursement this quarter. The Board of Commissioners of the Lawyers Fund for Client Protection determined that 11 Ohio lawyers misused funds for 36 clients in the past three months. The fund was created in 1985 by the Ohio Supreme Court to reimburse victims of attorney theft, embezzlement, or misappropriation. Since its inception, the victims have received more than $19 million. So it's an effort to improve the image of the profession by helping those who are harmed by the few who lack integrity or might be dishonest. After the Lawyers Fund for Client Protection staff investigates the claims, they're submitted to the board to see if the clients are eligible for reimbursement. It usually takes 12 to 18 months after an application is filed to repay the victims. Money used to repay the clients comes from lawyers' registration fees. Sandusky County students watched Ohio Supreme Court arguments unfold at host school Fremont Ross High School on September 16th. About 400 high school students from a dozen schools participated in the offsite court program. The justices travel across Ohio twice a year to enhance students' understanding of the legal system by providing an opportunity for them to observe Supreme Court proceedings in person and to interact with justices, attorneys, and court staff. We're delighted to be here in Sandusky County for today's oral arguments. Uh, this is our first time visiting and we're very pleased that the invitation was extended. Students were able to meet with the justices for a question and answer forum and later discuss the legal issues with the case attorneys. Caleb Covio, who wants to become a corporate lawyer, said it was a wonderful experience. I was surprised by the way that this, the, ju the justices like sort of attacked both sides. They, you can tell that they don't take a stance at all. They try to keep their opinions out of it. He said he learned more about the judicial system after observing the justices in action. I like the arguing part because I'm in speech and debate and I really like that. So. I feel like that prepares me for my future. This was the 71st time the court held oral arguments outside Columbus since the offsite court program started in 1987. The Ohio Supreme Court ruled on three cases on September 15th, including a judgment that determined 10 charter schools in Cleveland have to buy back computers, office equipment, furniture, and other property from a company that managed the schools. White Hat Management used taxpayer money to buy the school equipment, but each school's governing board signed a contract with the company that titled property in White Hat's name and required the schools to buy back the personal property they wanted to keep when the contract ended. The court stated that current laws are largely silent on the duties of operators like White Hat and concluded that the contract was enforceable. The justices returned the case to the trial court to dispose of the disputed property according to the contract. Overturning an 8th District Court of Appeals judgment, the Ohio Supreme Court in another case determined that a regional sewer district in the Cleveland area has the authority to create a program that manages stormwater and can assess a fee to implement the plan. The majority of justices determined that the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District's charter and state law gave the district the power to establish the program and fee because they resolved that any storm water is considered wastewater, which falls under the district's authority in state law. The district's planned program would collect, treat, and dispose of storm water. And Lorain County judges have no authority to order county commissioners to pay for courthouse security upgrades, the Supreme Court ruled on September 15th. In a unanimous decision, the justices stated that the Lorain County commissioners did not have to follow orders from the common pleas court administrative judges, mandating that they direct funds to the sheriff's office to enhance security at a probation department housed in a separate building. Because there was no lawsuit between the sheriff's office and the commissioners, the administrative judges had nothing to rule on. The Supreme Supreme Court concluded. Ohio schools are invited to apply for a transportation grant to visit the Thomas J. Moyer Ohio Judicial Center. The grants help schools defray costs to visit the Ohio Supreme Court and its Visitor Education Center from October 2015 through June 2016. The Thomas J. Moyer Ohio Judicial Center Foundation is providing nearly $20,000 for the transportation grants. The Visitor Education Center offers students, fourth grade and above, an inside look at Ohio courts. School tours include student participation in a mock trial and a courtroom visit featuring artwork that portrays the state's history and culture. Teachers or administrators can submit an online application through October 9th. Go to courtnewsohio.gov for more information. That's a look at Court News Ohio's top stories. Visit courtnewsohio.gov for the latest headlines on Ohio's courts. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. 